record. If you want to record, you can hit record, and I'll I'll certainly grant you permission. <laughs> Thanks for being here. We've got a good group here today. Very excited about this. This is day four of our three-day challenge, so it's a bonus day. Today's the day when we want to get into your questions. We want to answer whatever questions I might have uh, raised in your mind over the last three days. And I also want to talk about kind of a hodgepodge of things. And a lot of that is listed in the last bit of the workbook. So we're going to talk about some of those things. But um, let me clear up something before I forget again. Okay. <laughs> is that all right? I want to share the screens. And you can see here on page 16 of the workbook, there's a, a page where you can store your username, passwords, and it gives you five slots here for five different Craigslist accounts which if you have five different Craigslist accounts, that really technically means you're going to have five different emails. Also, you're going to have five different phone numbers, okay, because these are all phone verified accounts. So every time you open an account with Craigslist, you got to phone verify. So, you know, it's kind of hard to come by. And you run out of phone numbers pretty dang quick. If it, it, I mean, if you're me, you do. So, like, I've got a phone, you know, and then my wife has a phone. And then my kids have phones, but I don't really like asking them, you know. Um, so I'm kind of already running out of phones. So there, that's the issue there. But but it's okay. You don't really need a lot of accounts. Um, what you need these for is nothing that we did the last three days. Other than, okay, other than, when we go to Craigslist, I'll show you kind of a neat little trick. And... This probably has already been thought of by someone here in the room. When you go to real estate for sale and you find a property, let, let's say you put those search terms in there. Let me find the search terms. I'm going to go find day three search terms, which are probably getting close. Here they are. Yes. On page 33, I'm going to highlight those. I'm going to copy them. And then go, which is control C. And then I'm going to go back to Craigslist, put it in the search bar by control V. You see it automatically, like magically appears there. All right. So let's say I do all of this. Okay. And let's say I hide the duplicates. Let's say I make sure the, the mileage is what I want. Let's make sure the housing is what I want. Let's make sure I'm getting houses, condos, and townhomes. Okay. And then I'm going to hit apply. And you can see it pops up just like we've, we've shown each day this week. But now today, if I have an account at Craigslist, I can hit this save button and save this search. Okay. So see, it asked me to log in. So if I log in, I can save that search. Okay, I have a few saved here in this particular account. So what happens is, is I get notifications now in my email when new properties are added that meet those filter criteria. Okay, that way you don't have to constantly go back every week and look at this. You can actually just set notifications to kick off, which is important why you should choose the, the 10 markets. Okay, maybe that Maybe that kind of helps drive that point home too in picking markets because now you, you know, you can set up notifications so you don't have to go look. You'll have them emailed to you as people add properties that fit your filters here. Okay, you see the filters. Okay. So there's that. Okay. But then also look at an example here. This is also something else you can do with accounts when you have an account at Craigslist which is free, by the way, you can post ads, okay? Now, look at what I've posted here. I've posted desperate homeowner needs to sell, lease, purchase, or owner finance, okay? This is what I call a faux ad, all right? A faux ad, a fake ad, a phantom ad. I don't have this property under contract. I don't know what property this even is. This is a random photo of some random picture that was flipped backwards so it doesn't even look like anybody's house. And it's all fake. Property details, 
three bed, two and a half bath, two car garage. Purchase price one ninety five. Monthly rent seventeen fifty. Must have down payment ten thousand. Okay, serious home seekers only, please. If you pick ten markets, you can start posting some ads in some of those. Okay, I'm committed to quick sale. Can move. Okay, you so you can move in, start building equity sooner. Must sell. This is your chance to secure a favorable lease purchase or owner finance. Requirements, stable income, and your commitment. Okay, someone serious about home ownership. Now, this is a fake Excuse ad. Me. Go ahead. Excuse me, Justin. Sorry. Yes. Uh, uh, how did you know that uh, that ad is a fake? Because I put it up. I put it up there. <laughs> yeah, it's a fake because okay, I okay. put it up there. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's all right, man. It has no address. Okay, there's no address on it whatsoever. There's, there's nothing there. But this this is just a fake ad because I'm looking for what with this ad? What am I looking to build with this ad? Buyers. Interest. Buyers. Yeah, pretty house buyers with down payment. How much down payment do they got to have minimum before we even start talking? At least 10. At least 10, right. Okay, now I've gotten a few hits off of this ad. I put it up nine days ago, you see. All right, I've gotten a few. I've thrown away a few that were really bad. Um, let me see here. Here's one I got about it. Good morning. This is John. Interested in your home. A little information in the post. Us can't make a decision. Interest rate, address, interest rate, composition of the... Look, this guy's giving it a serious look over. Photos obviously are needed to evaluate the offer. The payment is high relative to the asking price. If you're inclined, please provide those. I have down payment. I have the down payment, he says. Okay, all right. Well, what do I know now that I didn't know yesterday about my market here? Someone help me. What did I what do I know now about my marketplace here that I did not know yesterday? Demand. Yeah. yeah, that there's people that actually want to do this stuff with me. I just need to get the lead out of my pipe and go get a, you know, a deal. I found here's another one. I found your listing on Craigslist. I am an investor. Okay, that's a, that's okay. I don't mind. I'll sell a deal to another investor who focuses on helping people in difficult life situations. Is this property still available? If it's still available, could we please connect via phone? My phone number is this. I would love to help out if possible. Okay, so this guy, he might be a guy doing what I'm doing. He, he looks like he might be a, a kind of like a, a me kind of person showing up on Craigslist. But what's he showing up on Craigslist doing? He's showing up on Craigslist calling an ad that looks like this desperate homeowner. Okay. All right. So maybe he is a buyer or maybe he has buyers. So I'm going to keep his name around because if, and when I get a deal around here, if I can't come up with a buyer pretty quick, I'm going to call this guy because he might also be an exit for me. See what I'm doing? I'm starting to build my network and my I'm starting to build my powerhouse in these markets. Okay, your net worth is what? Your network, right? You've heard that. So how you know, I don't I don't mean to disparage anyone here, but look at yourself and ask yourself, how many real estate friends do I have here in this market where I'm at personally, where I'd like to do some deals? You know, maybe the one where you live. How many people do you know in the real estate business that are doing stuff? Whether it's, you know, lenders or fix and flippers or or cash buyers that do, you know, rentals or what, whatever it may be. It doesn't matter. In inspectors, appraisers, hard money guys, other wholesalers. How many of them do you know? Okay, Craigslist is a great place to solve that problem. All right. So you can see there's a couple that I got that I thought were pretty interesting off of this particular ad. The guy I thought was interesting, he said the payment was a little high. You know, he might be right. He's giving me some tips. So I might go back here and change my phantom ad and drop the payment to like 
1550, 1650s, something, something like that. See if I get more hits because I want to get as many people interested in giving me 10 grand or more as possible. I just now, I, I just now need to go find a deal. Okay. <laughs> that That's the mentality, right? I just need to go find a deal because I know there are people, you know, and this is an ugly house. This is not even a good picture. I mean, it's not an ugly house, but it's not a pretty house. Like, we're not like, ooh, wow, that's a nice house. That's a starter home or something again. Okay, this is an older, nah. So this ad could even be better. So not a great ad even. But but my point is, is that in the workbook, uh, when you scan down through um, and you find that page that's got the multiple Craigslist accounts that you can, I'll get there, accounts where you can record your information. There's several here because you usually will only want to post one or two ads a day per account. Okay. So you don't get flagged by Craigslist as some kind of a, a spammy poster person. Okay. And really, honestly, once, once a day is fine. Okay. So you, you really don't have to have all these accounts, but in the, in the situation that I was in previously, I'm not currently doing this, but I could perhaps, um, but the, the situation I was in, I had a virtual assistant posting like several posts in several, several markets every day. And it was kind of a big deal. Um, don't know that that's necessary really I, that was me going overboard but but anyway if you have multiple accounts that's that's where you can record them there now let's talk a little bit more about posting ads because there are different types of ads you're going to want to post on craigslist and i, I then i want to jump into some q a that you guys have all right you can see there are some marketing upgrades that you'll want to do beyond craigslist as you grow in your in your confidence and in your business. And really the first one is just starting to post some ads on Craigslist yourself, okay? Maybe in the Real Estate Wanted, there's a decent little example in the Real Estate Wanted section. There is a Real Estate Wanted section of Craigslist, absolutely. Now, here's some posts that you might make, put an ugly house picture on there and then put this verbiage. We specialize in prime investor opportunity properties. I don't know, change the words, make it fit you. Handyman specialty properties. Okay. We are here to work with cash buying investors who are looking to move quickly. So now I'm posting ads in my markets to develop cash buyers list okay. with faux ads. Okay. These are faux ads because they're not real property ads. They're just ads. Okay. They've got pictures of an ugly house on them. They've got this words, these words. It's pretty obvious it's not a real house, but you will draw cash buyers, okay? Cash buyers. And you'll draw cash buyers easier than you'll draw even any other thing probably off Craigslist. But I definitely recommend, see, if you pick your 10 markets, then you can start to do some of these things in those markets, and this will enhance your your business, your marketing. All right, there's just example after example of how to attract cash buyers. Here's another thing. What about bird dogs? If you're working a market, why not get bird dogs? So here's ads that you would run to find bird dogs. Who are good bird dogs? Good bird dogs usually are firemen, post office workers, that, the mailmen and mailwomen that go door to door. Yeah. People that do delivery work. People that just are looking for extra cash that are familiar with the business, but don't want to do anything much besides, Hey, you know, every now and then I find an ugly house and I'll send you the lead. Okay. That's exactly what I want. That's all I want. I want you to find me ugly houses and, and, and flexible, motivated homeowners if they're pretty houses and send them to me. That's it. And these are the ads you can run to build this. Now, let me give you my experience with this, if it's okay. And I don't mean to bore you guys today, but I put this ad 
one of these ads or a series of these ads on Craigslist for about a week or two, two weeks. And I had, I've collected over 93 bird dogs. Okay. 93. Okay. Now that creates a whole other problem for me though, because I'm getting a lot of bunk property deals. Okay. <laughs> but nevertheless, I've got a bunch of bird dogs now. All right, so it's 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 up to me what to do with them and how to work them and, and to teach them what I'm looking for. Okay, but but this system here actually works quite well. At least it has for me. All right, so birddogre.com. All right, it's not active anymore, but when it was up, people were going there off of my Craigslist ad. Okay, my just my free post on Craigslist. You can see there's quite a few ads for those guys and gals. All right. Here is a JV partner ad. All right. You can change it. You don't have to say what I say. Here's the gist of it. If you're a local wholesaler and have discount properties available, I'd love to connect. I'd love the opportunity to connect and learn the specific type of investment properties you're interested in. Okay, You don't have to have a website either. Just hit reply and say, you know, say hello. All right. These are Craigslist posts. So just make, you know, modify them to make them fit you. I don't, I don't think my, I don't think my JV partner website's active right now either, but this used to be my website for that for sure. I don't know. Oh, actually, what I'm using for that now. I might, I might be using this. Let me see. No. Okay. All right. Um, I've tried to change a lot. You guys notice I do change a lot. Golly. Especially websites and stuff. <laughs> okay. Doesn't have to be fancy. That's the point. I'm kind of glad it's not working. Because you don't really have to have a website. But anyway, it's the words that are important. Get them to hit reply and start a conversation with you. If you have a website, that's cool too. JV Partners. So this is looking for coho sailors to hit you up, okay? Okay, so that is a, a good idea you should, you should grow with, all right? Here is a marketing upgrade technique, the digital band design, all right? Spreading your message through a meme type, a meme type picture. Okay, like this one here. I take over house payments. Okay, what if you had call, text, you, you know, and your phone number? What if you had that all over everywhere? What if you ran a, you know, ran a, a, a manual campaign and posted that on all the all the groups and everywhere that you could, you know, they'd let you. All right. So that that's that's the idea with that. Instead of bandit signs out in the real world, okay, run some bandit signs online all right here here's a um there's more information about that won't go into it technique number three text blasting using rei reply or some other text blast machine okay now rei reply seems to be the most favorite one of everyone nowadays i buy scrapes for zillow for sell by owners and for rent by owners and i text blast them Some people are starting out doing this. Not necessary. You can start out doing chapter one, two, and three. Add this on as technique number three, as, as the upgrade technique number three. Okay, That's how I would recommend plugging this in. If you're coming up, bootstrapping it. Okay. Very, very, very good technique, though, to text blast. All right. You guys have seen me do that and get leads, gobs of people saying yes. Okay. All right, so here we go. Um, number four, small targeted direct mail. I'm talking about yellow letters. Yellow letters, okay, to failed listings. And failed listings, other people around town that might be good prospects. For example, any, uh, any ugly houses, any stuff you see that you find, any people that you think might be motivated, probate leads absentee owners, divorce leads, tax delinquent properties, pre-foreclosures, 
bank owned properties are okay to check into also okay inherited property owners that's kind of like probate tired landlords eight years ownership and more expired failed listings okay now that's a big list so where do we start that's a good question i would start right here with number 10 personally okay. you don't have to number one and number 10 are my favorites all right after that you know i would probably consider doing yellow letters to perhaps pre-foreclosures okay maybe i would start working those three okay you're not going to tackle all 10 of these it's going to be very pricey very very it's not going to be fun to do yellow letters to all 10 of these or 12 of these all right so i would go with expired listings i would go with whatever you think might be you know good in your area like you're driving for dollar stuff if you do that or stuff like stuff you see and then i would probably do pre-foreclosure leads and then it then add from there if you want to add maybe do divorce okay all right maybe that's good all right so you would just send yellow letters so what i'm talking about everybody is just doing you guys saw that yellow pad of paper that i had a couple days ago i told you guys to go write lines on like a teacher like i was a mean teacher um that right there is exactly what i'm talking about a quick yellow letter and we're not talking about thousands of these we're talking about sending out a dozen of these on monday sending out another half a dozen the next week you know sending out you know, 30 the following week. No, we're not talking about large numbers here. We're talking about working like an assassin and hitting these expired failed listings, working like an assassin and hitting these pre-foreclosure leads. Okay. Cause there's not thousands and thousands and thousands of these. Now, if we want to get, if we want to get into that realm, just pull up your absentee owners and, and, you know, start working that and all your FISBOs because there's thousands and thousands of that stuff. All right. You're going to, you know, you're going to realize real quick, hey, the sniper technique is in some of these little niche lists, right? So work your niche lists in the niches are the riches. Remember that? Who said that? Anybody know? I don't know. Who said that? Niches are where the riches are. No. That's what I'm telling you today, too. Okay, so technique number five. We want to use paid ads. Okay. This is an upgrade. See, this is not something you're going to start out with using paid ads. So on YouTube, on Facebook, okay. Let's say, for example, Facebook, you have, uh, and I have done this. I don't do it constantly, but I do do it from time to time. I hate saying do do it. I do do it. I do do it sometimes, yes. And what I do do when I do do it is <laughs> I do this right here. You see this, I take over house payments, yellow crooked bandit sign. It literally looks like a bandit sign. I will boost that in my local niched market, meaning like a zip code. Okay, I'll boost it on Facebook in a zip code. All right, something very niched. All right, let, let me see where we got here. Yeah, paid ads. Very niched. All right, we take over house payments. All right, and you know, it's, it's an investment, but it's effective. Okay, very easy to do. Very easy to do. Okay, don't, don't sweat the, the small, they've got it figured out for you. Okay, you don't have to be like, oh, well, I've got to be a paid ads on Facebook expert. I got to be a pay per click expert. No, no, no. Really, they've made it so easy for you to spend your money buying paid ads that these people, I believe, a lot of them that are taking thousand, two thousand a month to run your paid ads are just scamming you, man. All right, because you could do it yourself. You really could. Now, you can't do it yourself if you're always telling yourself, I can't do that. I can't. I don't know. I, I don't know. Watch me. I'll get over there and break it. <laughs> I'll break Google. I, I, you stop talking like that. All right. You can do it. You can do it. 
All right, let's talk about realtors. We've been avoiding realtors uh, for the last three days. Let's talk about realtors. Okay. Here's a message that I, I want you to consider when sent into a realtor, okay? I put it in the very back of the book here because I didn't know where to put it in the front of the book, you know, frankly. So here it is. This is a message template to realtors. So you know you're gonna be running across realtors when you run into one on purpose or accidentally, here is the framework of your conversation with them, okay? Hi, I'm Justin. Could you your seller consider a creative offer? I don't lowball my offers. I can give your seller close to or 100% of what their home listing is worth. I wonder if any of your clients would consider doing something creative, maybe a lease purchase. Okay. When your seller sells their home to me, you get paid your commission, Mr. Or Miss Realtor. I will structure the offer to accommodate payment to you for your full commission. Part of your commission could be paid up front even, usually one month's worth, everybody. And the remainder will be paid at the closing. Can we discuss this home or any others you might have? Okay, nice, solid, nice, solid little message to realtors. All right. Does anybody have any questions on that? Okay, you guys feel you, you guys feel well equipped to talk to realtors now. I, <laughs> hey, Justin. Yeah. So you're saying when the home closes, the yeah. seller will um, pay the real estate agent's commission. Is that how you're working that? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's that's what I'm insinuating. There is that when when the house sells two three years up the road. You know, because it's a creative lease purchase or something like that. When it sells, actually sells, sells two or three years up the road, that there'll be a commission waiting for them. Probably somewhere around, you know, one and a half to two percent. And then up front here, they'll get like one, uh, like on the front side, out of my out of my option fee, I'll commit to giving them one month's rent or or roughly one percent. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cause I I talked to one real estate agent. I just, I just told her I would split, you know, split my option consideration with her. Yeah. If she would bring me the deals and she's sending me, you know, failed listings and stuff like that. So well, that's not have... a bad idea. Okay. <clears throat> not a bad idea. See, that's, that's, that's good. That's real good. You know, you might've, you might've promised a little, you might've got in a little deep with her, but that's okay. You know, that's perfectly fine. So yeah, good job. That's exactly the kind of relationship that you can develop and should, especially in your local market or markets. Okay. Let me let me ask you this too. Somebody I'm just I'm just being facetious a little here, but somebody help me out. If I've got great relationships with a realtor or two and I get a great lease option deal under contract and I can't seem to find a buyer for it anywhere. In some cases, would they be able to maybe help me by listing that on the inter I mean, you know, on the internet MLS on the MLS, or no? They could help you list it, but they may have somebody that didn't qualify that may be able to go into that lease option. Yeah, that might be the best way. Yeah. But yeah, certainly, yeah. There's they they de they definitely have some options, you know. Some of them, you know, and and some of these, you know, um, some of these realtors are really geared for that. Okay, you know, some of them aren't, you know, but some of them really, really are. And if you get the right one, if it, maybe you have an ad that you put on Craigslist asking for a realtor that would meet those needs. That wouldn't be a bad idea. I did not provide a template for that. I wish I had. That'd be pretty cool. And then they would, uh, then they'd be reaching out to you. Hey, yeah, I'll help you. You know, I'll, I'll help you find some <laughs> tenant buyers, or I'll help you find some property deals. To get a to get a realtor to give you failed listings, though, man, wow. Like I, I got to give you like a gold star, really. Cause that's, that's really good. 
not everybody seems to be able to pull that off for some reason. But, you know, if you if you're honest about it and you're clear about it and you tell them what you're going to do with it and then you offer to cut them in on it like Mike did, why would they say no? It's just information that they, they that they have access to that you don't. If they're willing to give a little share and care, they might make some money. Why not? Why wouldn't I? I'll set you up where you get all the field listings. Why not? That sounds pretty cool to me if I was a realtor. Okay. <laughs> all right. So just think about it. You know, don't avoid that, especially in your local market, everybody, because failed listings in your local market, you should definitely be sending them a yellow letter or something. You should be growing into that. Okay. That's these growth six growth areas are real legit areas to grow into. Okay. And you can really literally do quite a bit of that with no money or very little. All right. Anybody got any questions about anything? I said I was going to do Q&A and then I went ahead and did basically today's lesson for 30 minutes. I still want to talk about Dispo and stuff like that if you guys want to talk about, but I also want to take your yeah. questions. Thanks Carl, for being here. Question. Yeah, Carl, what's going on? Uh, do you have any issues on Craigslist like uh, when you're searching for uh, properties or co-wholesaling? A lot of the pop-ups of the uh, you see if you're a robot. Yeah, the captcha. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it happens a lot. It didn't used to, but it happens yeah, a lot now. A, a, a hell of a lot. Yeah, which is why you can't scrape it. See? Mm -hmm. You know, so think about it like that. You know, like, see, so you hear me talk about scraping and blasting Zillow, but you don't really ever hear me say, oh, you better go scrape. Craigslist and blast it. The reason why is because of that. It's pretty expensive to scrape. I mean, anywhere you go to get it scraped, it costs money. And then what you end up with is a bunch of Craigslist safety emails. You guys know what I mean when I say that? A Craigslist safety email. Let me see if I can find one here real quick. Uh, yep, there's one right there. Let me share screens and show you. I just picked a random post on Craigslist and look, I'll hit reply and choose email and look, it's this 5AD4 blah, 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 at house without a e dot Craigslist.org. That's the email. Well, you know, that's not the guy's email that posted this. This is Craigslist safety security in between go between email thing. Okay, so when you scrape, you get a bunch of those because he might not have even included a phone number at all. Okay, oh, it, he did in this case. So you would scrape a phone number and an email. But in a lot of cases, they don't put their phone number. They just have this security email. So you get a security email, which you can, bl you can blast those. But here's the tip, everybody. If you're going to scrape Craigslist, it's a little pricey. You're going to get a little less data than you hope for. Not only that, the data you get is going to have those security emails in it. And when you get those security emails, you know that you have 48 hours to text blast them or email blast them because that security email will change in 48 hours. Okay. <laughs> All right. So long story short, that makes Craigslist a very fertile farm territory for you because if you're willing to go through the CAPTCHA, and sometimes I'll be real with you, sometimes I have a problem getting through the CAPTCHA. It's just like, I don't know, I'm trying to click the pictures that have the bus in it. Last night. <laughs> yeah, the last two nights, actually. And I'm like, I don't know if it's my glasses or what but i'm pretty sure the corner of that bus is in that one little square but they I keep telling the me no going to the library yesterday because i thought it might have been my uh internet provider because the captions was coming so much i was good for about five going through about five or six uh listings then all of a sudden they just kept on popping up and then they would say uh after you do hit the uh, buttons for it, 
they'll say uh, it's an error. So you couldn't, it wouldn't give up no email, no nothing. So I, even, I went to the library. It worked a little bit better, but then the captions start getting bad again. So okay, so question: Is there a limit? Is there a limit there? Okay. How many you can do? Okay, okay. so no, it, it might be. It might be because I'm good for I say about six or seven pushing it before the captions start popping up. Yeah. So let me ask you this: Are you copy and pasting? Like I've been saying, like you copy a a, a thing and uh, from the workbook and then paste it and then and then send that as a message. Are you copy and pasting or are you writing, typing it in? Well, and I'm then... getting I'm getting the number, and then I I, I text it from my uh, Google Voice. Okay, so you're taking it off of the platform. You're taking it mm -hmm. off of Craigslist. That's smart mm -hmm. too. There you go. There's a solution. Boom. I was doing the copy yeah. and paste, uh, Justin. I was doing copy and paste. Uh, okay, and so it, yeah, the, the thing is, is you got to be careful with the copy and paste. After so many, Craigslist is pretty smart, and they figured out that you're just copy and pasting the same type message over and over. So you want to definitely switch your messages <laughs> frequently, every message two or three, and then you know occasionally <laughs> type one in manually and. Hit send. So just kind of play the game with them a little. Now, why would you want to do that? And, and the reason why is, is because, like I was saying, to scrape it sucks. And nobody's really doing that. So it's expensive to do. And you're just paying somebody else to go through the CAPTCHA. So that's that's fine. You can definitely do that. You can pay somebody to scrape it for you. But realize you're going to have to blast it within 48 hours for all of that stuff to still work, okay, because of the security emails. Not a problem. But what's good about it is, is that because it's such a pain in the butt now, that how many people are really going through here and actually messaging these people? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, okay. I feel like the competition has been pretty well knocked back a lot on Craigslist. So just as, you know, there's a lot of, I just saw a thing on TV this morning about Craigslist has some scams on it. Well, okay, great. Um, they may even be talking about me. I, I don't know, you know, because I'm on there. Like I just showed you a faux ad. I'm trying to find cash buyers and people that have down payments. And <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm doing some stuff on Craigslist that you might say, well, that's not even a real house. Yeah, that's true. If you feel like you don't want to do that, don't do it. But I feel like Craigslist has kind of become a real fertile area for us again. It used to be. I think it kind of is again because of all of these security restrictions. In particular, I think they create that scenario for us. So I don't know. What do you guys what do you guys think? What's your opinions? So you're saying like the barrier of entry is harder to get in. Yeah. So people exactly. aren't gonna put up with it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> well said. Well said, yeah. So, you know, do uh, do what you can, um, and when you get frustrated with it, just set it down for a while, you know, and and come back to it. This is this is the uh, the manual low and slow way of getting going, but it's no cost, that's for sure, and and it's a legitimate way of getting going. You know, I, I, don't, I don't knock it for that, but it, it definitely does have that CAPTCHA drawback for sure. Anybody got a, a question or anything? Any other questions or thoughts about that or any other thing? Yeah, Justin, I got a few questions and comments if you got just a minute. Yeah, no problem. Um, when you're using rent links, does it sync well with Zillow? I mean, can you put like a rent to own on rent links and it'll sync with Zillow? Okay, so I haven't used rent links in a little bit because it kind of, I don't know, kind of got hard to use for me for some reason. And so when I use a platform like that, I use Tenant Turner nowadays. Tenant but, Turner. TenantTurner.com, yeah. But I can tell you that the ones that that syndicate like that, like Tenant Turner does, like Rent Links did or does, and the others that do, um, Turbo Tenant is another one. Um the ones that syndicate to Zillow, Zillow doesn't like rent-to-home. Okay. 
So right. if you if you have the words rent to own or anything like that in your in your ad, Zillow will just ghost it. Which means they'll act like they're going to let you put it up there, but they won't really show it to nobody. Yeah, I, I've experienced that. Yeah, yeah. So Zillow is divided in two. Okay, there's two Zillows. There's a Zillow, and there's a Zillow rental manager, and they are completely separate things. So if you Google Zillow, Zillow's going to pop up. If you Google Zillow rental manager, Zillow rental manager will pop up, and so you want to advertise your deals in Zillow Rental Manager if you can. Yeah, that side of it. Okay. Um, another question. You just did you just mention Turbo Tenant? Mm-hmm. Okay. For um, that's a good place for to get your lease agreements if you want one that's real state specific that the attorneys have you know, got all the, the bells yeah. and whistles in. Yeah. In case you just exactly. don't want to use because it's about sixty bucks per, per lease, but it's got it's got everything you need in there. Yes. And also yeah. um, if you cheat like me and you don't want to pay for prop stream, you can go to prop wire, which is yeah. Jerry Norton's deal. Yeah. It's about like prop stream, except it's it's free. Yeah, that's great. And Lots of one good other, tips. One other thing on your JV deals yesterday or day before yesterday, you were talking about. Yeah. Um, I've done two JV um, wholesale deals, and the guy I was doing a deal with, uh, two different people screwed me out of my went around me both times. So I just wanted to warn you people that there's there's no code of ethics among real estate agent. So you better, you know, don't do any handshake deals. You better get oh, your wow. paper right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely get signatures and then um, definitely in an invoice. I'm hot to trot on the invoice. I'll tell you that everybody that invoice goes in with the rest of it, man. Like immediately day one, like as soon as I get paperwork inked, I've got an invoice I'm drawing up. And as soon as I get a buyer that I assign it to, they sign the assignment and it goes attached with my invoice. Okay. Yeah. And that's just part of running a business, but you know, yeah, I've been screwed a few times too. Let me tell, let's talk about that because it happens. Okay. And you're living in a world where, there are people literally that sit around all day long trying to think up ways to screw you. Okay. Now, that's just the world we live in. There's no possible way that you can sit long enough and think hard enough to outthink the people who think about how to screw you. So you're too busy. You got to be a productive individual because that's who you are. So you're at a disadvantage when people want to screw you. That's just the way it works. And you'll never be able to fully counteract that. So you don't worry about it too much. You do the best you can to prevent it moving forward, but realize that it will probably happen again at some point. Something will happen. Somebody will do something unscrupulous, and there we are. All right. But also realize that there's a lot of really good people out there, too. They're still doing all good. Now, if you spend all your time thinking about how to keep people from screwing you, you won't get to make any money. Yes. You won't, you'll be too busy doing that. So that's just my tip on that. But yeah, definitely get paperwork, you know, get, get signatures, get promises and get handshakes and smiles and signatures and invoices. <laughs> Justin, you say it in your lease option course. There's one part you said that you got the buyer to sign the paperwork first, but but that's not right. You get the seller to pay because you won't have anything to assign unless you get the seller to sell the sign first. Isn't that right? That's correct. That is correct. Yeah. Okay, you might have been hearing a story that I told maybe once uh, about uh, my brother. He He did that one time many, many years ago. 
I mean, it worked out, but he took a down payment from a tenant buyer and didn't have a house. He, he said, I'll get you a house. Just give me the money today. And the guy gave him the money. And then like a couple months later, after sweating bullets, you know, like my brother was sweating bullets because he'd taken this money and then he, he needed to find a house. He said, That's pressure. Well, he found a guy one and the guy was happy, but it, it was, it's not worth the stress and it's probably illegal to do it that way too. I was totally against it. My brother wanted to try it. Don't know why my brother's no longer in the business either, by the way, but um, just of his own choice, but that that's, that's reverse wholesaling like lease options. But I, I would never, ever take the money up front without having a house. You don't have anything to sell until you get a house really technically, like you just said. Yeah. Have you ever thought about um, putting something in the contracts that says if this house doesn't appraise at the time it, you know, they go to exercise their option that each one of you can hire an independent appraiser and you would, you know, split the difference or something like that. Okay, yeah, so I've got a, a advanced maneuver that I use on folks. I call it an advanced maneuver, and I'll, I'll share it with you here. It's called the future value lease purchase, okay? So I'm going to share screens and just answer that question really quickly with a big bang here. I oftentimes will try to get the homeowner to write up the agreement with me, like, or, or I'll write it up for them. Okay, here's an example. The guy wants to rent it two or three years. After two or three years, if the tenant wants to buy the house, there's an option to buy the house at, the, at fair market value. We don't know what fair market value is going to be and all of this. Here's the words that you're referring to. Okay, purchase price to be fair market value at time of purchase determined by independent certified real estate appraiser or the mean of the homeowner's independent certified real, real estate appraiser and the buyer's independent. Okay, so in other words, the average of the two. And then you might you might keep this in there, purchase price to be no less than blank and no more than blank, or you might delete that. Okay, and you might also delete this or keep this in there, which is an optional good good tenant discount type thing okay this actually helps me close deals everybody this is a big tip okay because <laughs> this helps me close deals especially with homeowners that don't know don't know what fair market value is going to be they don't maybe even know what it is today and they want to just sell it based on an appraisal great i'll fun. still go ahead Everyone, I'm, everybody I'm running into is, you know, all I'm asking way more than what the house is worth. And I, I hate to set somebody up for failure. You know, your buyer pays you a big down payment and then they can't, the house won't appraise for that and then they're going to lose their down payment. Yeah, well, this, um, this words, these words here will definitely correct that um, because it'll be based on the appraisal value. Yeah. Okay, so do you, you don't use just, that in? Do you use that in every every deal you do, or just not, certain ones? No, not every deal. Just the ones where it makes sense to you know. The, yeah, passion. if it, yeah, for example, what you just said, if the homeowner is asking way more than fair market value, you know, like let's say the house is worth two hundred and fifty thousand, but he's asking three hundred, and I don't know yeah. if you know if I add my twenty on top of that. Goodness gracious, we're we're <laughs> we're pushing thirty percent now. Okay, overvalue. All right. So I'll, before I dump that guy because that's a no go for me. Okay, which is what you're saying. It's a yeah. that doesn't you know somebody's going to get the short end of the stick on that. Before I dump that guy because it's way too crazy on price, I'll ask him, Hey, sir, does it make more sense? Instead of naming a price that we're guessing, you know what it will be worth, and so on and so forth. What if we just write up the agreement where you, the appraiser or your appraiser and my appraiser, the, you know, the mean average of the two, you know, something like that. It, if I put it in there where you just get the appraisal full market value and there's no screwing around, sir, does that make you feel more comfortable? Sometimes that's a hit. Okay. Sometimes that's a hit. All right. Not always. But those are the exact words. I just put a link in the chat here for you if you want to snag that, those words off that cheat sheet that I was looking at there. 
And at what point do you allow the tenant, prospective tenant buyer to actually go view the house? I guess you got to kind of be sure they, they're pre-qualified before you start sending people over there. Um, well, um, actually, yes, you do want to pre-qualify them a little bit. And I'm going to share another cheat sheet with you right now that'll help you with that. And let me find it here. All right. Here it is. I'm going to put it in the chat and you can grab the cheat sheet. But this cheat sheet here is the dispositions cheat sheet for lease options. Okay. So creative stuff, creative stuff, pretty house stuff. And it actually has the actual words that we're going to use to pre-qualify. All right. And where, where it is on the sheet. Okay. It starts talking more about like, you know, right here and pre-qualify the tenant buyer prospect. Okay, the ones I'm checking off, these are how you pre-qualify the tenant buyer. You wanna make sure that they're interested in a creative deal, not just renting or something. Okay. Have they seen the pictures? Rent to own program requires a down payment. Have they driven by? Okay, set up a live call to discuss those things with them. Just a, it's just a quick phone call to make sure they're real, okay? Verify that information and set up a call or set up a time for them to go look at the property. That's it, okay? That's it. So pretty simple, pretty simple process. Pre-qualify them over text usually. And then, and then the, when the cream is rising to the top, verbally, quickly over phone, and then check their Facebook profile to make sure they look like they're real people. Okay. Because that's usually where they'll be messaging you anyway, is on Facebook Messenger. Okay. Ask them a few questions, make sure they're real, and then set up an appointment with them. Okay. To go see the property. Only after they've passed muster. Okay. In other words, they've got you know, money to move in, you know, they've got down payment, they've got jobs, they, they seem like real people. Okay, okay, now we'll let those people go, go take a look at it. But no, no other, no other jokers. Now, how do I grab that out of, out of the chat? Did you say, can I? Yeah, just click it and it'll open up in your browser and then you can bookmark that page or save that link or something like that. Okay, well, I'll have it, I'll have a recording anyway, when you send it out. Okay, I yes, and I'll I'll try to re, I'll put that in the I'll actually put that in the email too. Okay, just so okay, you know. good. All right, does that make sense, everybody? On dispositions, there's a dispositions checklist. It's got the actual words on it. Okay. All right. So right there, it says if they are successfully pre-qualified by you then set up a scheduled viewing okay so they have to answer all those questions properly i tried to make that where it was like step by step just real simple to follow i find the checklist idea not quite as easy to follow as i would hope but yeah there it is everybody step by step anything else anybody has a question on anything guys and gals i love that you're here thank you for being here I a question for you. yes Yes. On the mobile homes, how do you insure them? Because they're not like regular homes. Um, I'm not worried about the insurance too much, really. On mobile homes, on regular foundations, solid foundations, permanent foundations, mm -hmm. on their own land out in the county. Just, well, if you were doing I'm a lease really... purchase on it, how would you get? How would you qualify them for insurance on that? I, you know, it's not even my worry, man. I, <laughs> <laughs> it's not even my. It's not even a thought that enters my mind. You know, that homeowner currently probably has something. Okay. 
when I have a tenant buyer that's interested in doing the deal, they sign off a disclosure that says that they've been given ample time to look into all of those details. And I'm assigning those deals over to them in an as is condition. You know? And so I'm at the same time, I'm letting them know that they need to have tenant insurance. I'm letting the homeowner know at the same time in the same disclosure that, you know, you're going to have to let your insurance person know that you're renting it out. So there's insurance ramifications here. What they are, I don't know, because I don't know what the situation is in that place and that spot with those people and those what insurance company. I don't know. <laughs> Be hard to say, but my disclosure lets everyone know. Okay, and then that's about the best I can do, really. But I love those trailers on permanent foundation. That is for sure. Good money. Hey, Justin. Yeah. When you're dealing with mobile homes, I found that these every county has got different regulations on on what they how they can lend, and it's it, it yeah. can be a lending nightmare. Yeah. To try to get one finance. I mean, it can be. A year or two too old. Yeah, you may have to have an FHA foundation under it, right. um, which is different than a permanent foundation. I mean, it just it can be a you know a real hassle. So you kind of keep that in mind right. if you're going you know put somebody in there thinking they're going to get financed and then they you know they may not be able to get financed. Well, I'm glad you I'm glad you brought that up. Um, there's a lot of um, a lot of that covered in the disclosure as well. Let me see if I can just pull up that disclosure and I'll, I'll let you let you see it here. But yeah, you, you know, they've been given ample time to to look into those kind of things as well here. All right. I understand that we this is the tenant buyer saying I do. I understand that I do not own this property. It's owned by the owner. I understand that the assigner, that's me, the wholesaler. Justin is assigning my legal interest for a profit. I understand that the option to purchase fee is non-refundable. And I and may or may not even be considered as a down payment by my future home loan lender. I've been advised to seek the advice of a professional home loan lender to establish a workable plan for qualifying for a home loan during the time of the option of this purchase. Whether they do or not, I cannot make them. I I don't control them, but I can I can control the fact that they were made aware. The property address above is being offered in as is condition. They've been told to find an inspector. They've been told to seek legal counsel, financial tax accounting counsel, professional real estate agent broker counsel, professional vendors, perform all necessary due diligence before entering this lease and option to purchase agreement. They've been advised that the value of the home may go up or it may go down. We make no guarantees or promises regarding the condition or current market value or future market value of this property. Tenant buyer has been advised that they are not required to buy, but are purchasing and receiving an option to buy. All utilities are responsible responsibility of the tenant. Property lease between the owner and the tenant buyer, if they default, all beneficial options or rights of the purchase of the tenant buyer are suspended. In other words, if they quit making the rent, they can't buy the house. I understand I'm leasing the property from the owner. If I default on the lease, subject to whatever interest the law may determine me to have at law, I will be evicted. I understand the agreements being assigned to me is not a right of ownership in the property again, nor does it guarantee me any equitable interest unless I exercise my option to purchase. And I understand Justin is not a realtor. What do y'all think about that? Is that pretty thorough? Is there anything I need to add to it? Okay. <laughs> I've been crafting that. You might come up with something I need to add to it. No joke. Okay. No kidding. I've been working on that for many, many, many a year. Okay. And those are all the ways that somebody tried to screw me. And there we got it right there now in black and white. Okay. <laughs> all right. Hey, Justin. Yeah. Justin. 
Uh, just a little FYI, anybody doing this in North Carolina, uh, they need right. to go to the um, North Carolina uh, landlord statutes and because there's some very specific wording that has to be in that option contract or do you going to get yourself in some trouble? Yeah. I, I avoid North Carolina. I avoid Ohio, Illinois, Oklahoma. Um, I would recommend avoiding Texas unless you understand what you're doing there too. So, you know, there's, there's some places that, you know, wholesaling in general and lease options too are, are somewhat more troublesome or, dip, you know, difficult to pull off properly. But there's a lot of places that it's still pretty wild west. And I, I would recommend fishing there unless you live in one of those places. Let's say you live in North Carolina. Okay, then educate yourself on how to do it right over there, you know, and then be one of the few because there, you know, there's not going to be as many people competing because they're not as educated as you are. That's what I recommend. Okay, now me, I, I just choose to go to places that's Wild West because that's just my personality and that's, I'm, I'm, I'm from Kansas City. Kansas City. All right, so I'm, I'm kind of wild west myself. And so I'd try to just avoid places where I feel like it's a little, I also avoid places like Oregon, Washington state. Um, I don't really like Colorado personally. The reason why in Oregon, Washington state is because you can't hardly evict anybody. Okay. So it doesn't make That's sense. Right. To, you know, so it doesn't make <laughs> sense to put somebody Carl. in there, you know, exactly. Yeah. Carl knows. So, you know, educate yourself on what, you know, that's what I was saying when you're, when you're choosing marketplaces, you know, put a little bit of thought into it and don't just willy nilly. But well, when, when you choose a new market, how do you, how do you figure out that, that it is a, it is going to take you two years to evict somebody? I mean, do you contact an attorney in that state or, or how do you do that? No. no, you can usually just Google, you know, I get a lot of information off bigger pockets. I hate to admit that, but you know, like <laughs> bigger what? pockets, bigger pockets.com. You know what I'm talking about? Like yeah, there's a lot of the always. forum, you know, or it, stuff like that. Yeah. People where people have already asked that question over there and they've had some real professional people answer, man, you know, like people smarter than me. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, that's how that works over there. Oh, so it's not illegal in Oklahoma. You just have to double close. Oh, uh, okay. Or you can't advertise your equitable interest. So you have to have a buyer's list. Ah, okay. I'm seeing now. So I can do it. I just have to not do it the way I was going to do it. I have to do it weirdly, you know, to make it work. You know, you'll, you'll learn stuff like that over at bigger pockets or other places. That's where I, I don't really call any lawyers or anybody. I, another just, tip though, yeah, go ahead, Carl. Google it. Those two are the best. Yeah. I used to just Google it first, but bigger pockets. I I get um I'm on there at least two or three times a week. So they they have a very big forum on oh, yeah. anything you want to know. Exactly. Yeah. And you can find out about market areas and everything. Mm -hmm. You probably go on there and find out find out about me even. There's probably people on there who have talked bad about me even. <laughs> <laughs> might be. <laughs> I don't I don't think they talk bad about me, but you know, you never know. But anyway, yeah, there's there's a lot of talk on there. That seems to be where the pros go. I don't know. So that's nice. Mm -hmm. YouTube, you get a lot of bad info, you know, but not all bad. So it just be depends careful. who it's coming from. Yeah. Be careful. A lot of it's clickbait, so don't just take it at face value. You gotta kind of look look deeper you know jason says could i talk about exclusive option to purchase how much time do i allow myself due diligence period to get out of it if i need to well because it's an option it doesn't really matter jason i have an option to buy so is nobody's going to force me to do anything i can walk away anytime i want just change my mind i don't want to buy it okay option i have an option so you want to get on the time frame on an option you want to get as long as possible, whether it's exclusive or non-exclusive. It doesn't matter. Get as long as possible. 30 days minimum, 60 days, <laughs> you know. On a lease option, you get in two or three years. Okay. See what I'm saying? So as long as possible. The longer, the better. 
What 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 a when would you use an option as opposed to uh, an exclusive option? Okay, so the difference would be, and I'll show that right here in the book. Um, let me find the page, and then I'll I'll uh, share screens and show you the option agreement. Okay, it should be here somewhere close. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, we. Okay. Option agreement. I'm going to share screens here if it'll let me. Okay. Option agreement. Um, what was the exact question again? I, I lost it when I sneezed. What's, what's the difference between an exclusive option? Oh, yeah. An option, yeah. Okay. Well, let's look at the wholesaler one because that's even a better one to talk about. Okay. There it option is. to purchase real estate. Yeah. Okay. You see where it says down here property, the seller thereby hereby gives and grants permission to the buyer or your assignee for a period of. Let's say you want to do 30, 60, 90 days from the date hereof, the non-exclusive right. What does non-exclusive right mean? Somebody tell me what that means. And you're not locked in. Well, that means the seller's not locked in. It could allow somebody else to, yeah. But exclusive. Yeah. Uh, exclusive it, it, would mean I and only I have the right and option to buy. Okay. See, when you're asking a seller to give you the exclusive option, then you're saying, hey, let me tie up the property. You can't sell it to nobody but me for the next 30, 60, 90 days. Okay. That's, that's a tougher sale. When you say non-exclusive, you're saying, hey, listen, you're giving me the right, but you're also keeping the right to yourself, Mr. Homeowner. If you find somebody else quicker than I can get it done, you'll pull the trigger with them, I recognize. But you are granting me permission. Okay. Giving me a piece of paper to sell. It's very, very weak. Very, very weak. But non-exclusive, that's what that means. That means that they... They're running in the race alongside you, and whoever gets to the finish line first wins. And that's how I explain that to the homeowner, too, by the way. Mr. Homeowner, it's like, you know, we have your horses running in the race and my horses running in the race. If you get to the finish line before me, sir, I'm not going to stand in your way. I'm just looking for permission to get this going so that I can maybe get this put together and get this done. Is that something we can do or maybe not? Very, very easy pitch. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anybody else with a question? Anybody coming to an end? We went over a little bit here. It's okay. Hey, one, more, one more real quick. Where do you yeah. put all your, with the uh, Trello? You know, I've been using the Trello and getting used to that. Do you, when you start, when you build your buyers list, one of the problems I have is I, I write, I write stuff down like everybody and it gets in a pile and I put stuff, I, I'll put some stuff in a, uh, you know, start a spreadsheet and put a few things there. Do you keep any of that stuff in your Trello? Do you keep a separate list of your, of your tenant buyer, tenant buyers? And okay. So yeah, tenant. right here on the tail end, you know, you can see I've added hot leads. You can put a lead here and name it whatever you want to name it and then have all the notes in the world you need. You can attach a contract to it, you know, yeah. wh whatever you've sent, pictures, upload pictures of the property, the whole nine yards. Okay. Here's a follow-up list. If, if I wanted one that had tenant buyer prospects in it, I just add one. Okay. Boom. And there we're good to go. And if I yeah. want it over here, I just put it there. Do you personally use use your Trello for that type, for those types of lists, or do you have another? You I don't. I don't anymore because I use REI Reply. Okay. okay. But it works. The REI Reply CRM works just like this. Okay. So it was an easy switch for me, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was almost like using Trello. Cool. Justin, are you using the 
original REI reply. I know they got one now for creative that, you know, they got that AI stuff and in, integrated with it and all that. Yes. I'm and using this. regular REI reply. Yep. And I've just send out, you know, I've got a, I've some modifications I've made to it just to suit me. And that seems to work fine, but I, I don't have anything special really. I, okay. I don't I'm, I want you to get get you to set mine up whenever I can get no. on board it. I'm having a hell of a time trying to get on board it on that thing. Okay. Let me know. That sounds good. Forward. I sent out my first thousand texts last week. I got about uh probably thirty to forty yeses and maybes. Wow. And got yeah. two that's pretty you know, pretty serious about it. Nice. Nice. Good. Good. Glad to hear that. Yeah. So it, it all, you know, it's all kind of a numbers game, everybody, you know, really what we've been talking about the last four days is just the activity of, of getting something going, you know, that's really it. And everybody here is capable of doing that. And then once you kind of have that going, the next step is kind of just mentally adjusting to the idea that it's all kind of a bit of a numbers game now that I have the right process and the words to use. Um, you know, I'm going to get, well, here's what I find out of about, I try to talk to 65 people a month, okay, personally. All right, if you want to know my number, I try to personally talk to 65 people in a month, really. Uh, out of those 65 about 15 of them are, are, are worth a darn. Okay. Out, out of those 15, I'm probably sending five contracts. Okay. And, and getting, um, you know, maybe a, a deal or two. Okay. You know, out of that. That's, that's not that bad when you think about, you know, what ugly house wholesalers do. Okay. They do a lot. Okay. So you got to create some conversations. And so that's, that's the whole point here of this, of this three day action challenge is just kind of get something in the ball rolling. So I'm, I'm excited to hear that you've got something moving and that you're getting positive responses. And these people are, whether they end up being great or not, you know, it's a numbers game. You'll get there. So I know when a student or someone that's listening to my content tells me, Hey, listen, I'm doing this, 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 this step one, two, three, four, five, like kind of like they have this process figured out. I know it's a matter of time before they get a deal. It's just a matter of time. It's just now becoming a numbers game for them because they've got the process down. So make that your goal, everybody. Get the process down for you, okay? Because then it takes your success out of the realm of one day I'll get it figured out. And it puts it into the realm of, I'm on my way. It's just a matter of time. I'm working the process. And the process will produce results every time, okay? If you run it enough, it's a numbers game, okay? All right. Don't want to lecture everybody. Love you. Thanks for being here. Anything else we need to talk about before we cut and run? You guys going to have a one, long weekend? I've got one last question. Yeah. Are you, um, say, scraping uh, and, and getting the names and phone numbers of properties that are for rent, but they are, they're listed by the, the real estate agent or a property manager, and then texting them, which that will be, you know, you'll be breaking the TCPA or whatever it is, because you, you know, that kind of deal. Are you texting them people? Yes. 100% not violating any laws. Yeah. <laughs> well, you Absolutely. Can, yeah, you can go to um, like hot pads and you can get uh, scraping solutions. I think for $350, they will set up a scrape for somewhere like hot pads. Yeah, so I have them scrape Zillow for rent by owners and I get thousands and thousands of listings. Okay, thousands every week. They have a lot. <laughs> so in that I get, I'm asking for the by owners, but in that I get a lot of property managers, realtors, so on and so forth. 
So nevertheless, um, you know, they're all listed on Zillow. So they're asking people to call them, text them. So but you you bypassing yeah. the, the property manager and texting the owner. Oh no, I'm I'm actually texting whoever whoever put the listing up, whether it's a realtor or property manager or owner or whoever whoever has the listing. So yeah, so just whoever the number is. So a lot of times it is a realtor or or a property manager. So a lot of those get thrown in the trash pretty quickly. And so, some of them don't, you know. Some of them the yeah, my client might be interested in that. Okay, I'll get okay, back so, with you. So you're not skip tracing those numbers. No, people. no, heavens I mean, no. you're not skip tracing the, the properties to get to the to get to the owner. No, not at all. Okay. No, if you did that, then you'd have to do the whole scrub thing and do not call yeah. list and all that. Stuff. Then you right. might be violating the law. Yeah. yeah. Yep, that's right. All right, guys. Did you get anything out of this four days? Hopefully. Okay, good. My calendar's open. That's a free gift for everybody here that attended this. If you want to hop on my calendar for a 15-minute call sometime in the next week or so, Help yourself, hop on there, and I'll I'll give you a free one-on-one. -on -one. Answer any questions you have, whatever. Talk about what your goals are and stuff. That's available if you'd like it, okay? You can get that at shutupmoney.com. Click the top. There's a thing at the top that says meet Justin, schedule Justin. Shutupmoney.com. Okay, love you guys. Anything else I can do? Have a good one. Stay Stay blessed. Stay happy. Stay busy, most of all. Appreciate Stay it. busy, yeah. All right, bye-bye.